May govanen, may lanen. Greetings, and well met, friends. And welcome to Art and Tea. I am Shayna. And my name is Ace. And on this random episode of Fun Times, I'm going to be painting a picture of the Shire, and Shayna and I will be telling you random facts about hobbits and, I guess, well, obviously the Shire, because that's what I'm painting. You... We only one definition we really need to talk about, and that would be the hobbits. Mm -hmm. For whatever reason, in my lovely encyclopedia, that um, Tolkien encyclopedia or Tolkien guide, as it refers to itself, the hobbits' definition was super long. But all it told you was where to find more information about hobbits scattered out the Lord of the Rings. And I'm like, really? There's no definition on hobbits in my encyclopedia? <laughs> How odd! <laughs> yeah, go figure. But the first part of it actually did give a slight definition, it is, and it is basically diminished from, what is that word, China? Do you know what that word is? Uh, let's oh. give it a stab. Hobitlin? Hobitlin? Which basically, we'll go with that. yeah, Hobitlin, which basically means hole builders. Fun fact, not all hobbits live in holes. Nope. All right. Hmm. I have a really long story about how I got into Lord of the Rings. I'll try to sum it up. <laughs> okay. So, as I said, my name is Ace, and I got into Lord of the Rings, I guess, my middle school year. So, I was probably about 11 or 12, right as the movies were coming out. Um, in a nutshell, I was basically told I was too stupid to read Lord of the Rings, so to prove my teacher wrong, I read all three of them and wrote a book report on it. And then I ended up watching the movies with my dad, and we sort of kind of bonded over it, and that was when I read The Hobbit. So yes, I w did the sinful thing. I watched the movies before I read the books, and then I read The Hobbit after I read Lord of the Rings, so everything started falling into place after that. And I've only completed The Cimmerillion twice. Still don't know everything about it, so... Yeah, not the king of, not the queen of nerds that everyone thinks that I am. And I'm going to put this in preference. I'm not a purist. I think that certain things in Lord of the Rings should be left to whatever the reader wishes to define it as. So, but same time, I don't like Tariel. So shame on me, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> Take it away, Shayna. Okay. So again. I am Shayna, and I got into Lord of the Rings a little later. It was more along, like, high school age, because I was, like, probably 16. Um, my f I had a friend at the time that got into it and was telling me, oh, these movies are great. And I was like, oh, I don't want to watch the movies without reading the books. Ended up watching the movies first anyway. Um, got them from the library, of all places. And then read the books. We felt... Well, I fell totally in love with the story, um, did end up reading all the books, um, read the trilogy first, then read The Hobbit. I still have not managed to make it through The Silmarillion yet. Working on it, it's on my list for this year. Um, but yeah, and, and fun, embarrassing fact that I don't think I've ever told you, Ace, is my friend and I were so obsessed with The Lord of the Rings at the time that we, we actually did like the movie marathon where we would get together, watch the extended editions. We managed to marathon through them an entire night. We were like so dead tired the next day. It was hysterical. Um, but we actually dressed up as hobbits, and there's some very embarrassing photos that exist of us during this. We need to oh, show oh. these photos. <laughs> I'll have to see if I can dig them out for you. So I can pop them up on the screen. Here they go. Pop, no. Pop, pop. no <laughs> kidding, no, kidding, no, kidding. No, no, no. They're so <laughs> terrible. <laughs> actually, another fun fact. I, I actually, me and my dad do watch The Lord of the Rings at, like every Christmas because add on to a little bit more information about me. Um, the Christmas I received the movies. Um, I received the Fellowship in The Two Towers one Christmas. That Christmas was the same Christmas Return of the King was in theaters, so me and my dad actually spent Christmas evening at the theater. We were going to take Samuel with us, but he's like, I can't stand to watch Gollum on screen, so he didn't go. <laughs> but now he can watch Gollum, so every Christmas, my dad and I, we watch the movies together. We, don't, we haven't marathoned the extended edition yet. I'm still working on it. <laughs> 
Um, it it's truly an experience. So. Of course, I just now got my friend Megan to actually watch them all the way through, and we, I posted it on Facebook, and all my fr- all, all of our other friends were like, "Seriously, she hadn't made you watch them yet?" Yeah, um, I I convinced my younger brother to to watch them, and actually, when we first, you know, I first started getting into it, it was right when Return of the King won like so many different Oscars. Oh my! And goodness. they they actually put it back into theaters around here, and so. I actually took um, Nick, my younger brother, to go see it in the movie theater. It was one of the first times I ever locked my keys in my car. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> so there was a lot of memories, you know, there. But we, we ended up sitting in the theater. We saw it entirely, like, by ourselves. So it was a great movie experience because we got to, you know, like, yell at the screen and all the fun things you do in a movie theater when you're by yourself. Yep, that's pretty much our experience. It was me and my dad and then, like, another dad and his two kids and we're all sitting there yelling at the, at the, at the theater screen so yeah, yeah, well, this, facts. <laughs> yeah this was just literally me and nick so we we had a Lucky. great time i know right <laughs> and then they tore that movie theater down so. oh <laughs> the memories they're gone yeah so anyway but yes back to the point at hand what i wanted to do was since i'm so in love with the fantasy world of middle earth and um, tokens the desire to have I get, literally an English mythology because apparently England doesn't have any mythology mm-hmm. um, that I wanted to make a creative way of sharing it with my friends as well as my artistic skills. So that's what we're hearing today. So as I paint Shane and I will be sharing some random facts of basically the Shire and Hobbits. At least what we're known. Or we're going to try anyway. So I will start with the first random fact, and that is that the Shire lies within the old, old kingdom of Anor. Or is that how you say it? Anor? Arnor? Sure. Or Arnor? I'm, try- mm-hmm. I'm trying to remember how Gandalf says it in the movie, but I'm not Gandalf, so there you go. Yeah. Um, let's see. Arnor was once the kingdom of men located, located in the northern, I cannot read, in the northwest position of Middle Earth. It was founded by Eladin and, contain, and contains the likes of Numenorians, the Duerdain, Elves, and Hobbits. Unfortunately, the kingdom was eventually fragmented, resulting in the realm of Car- Cardolon? Rot- who? Ranador <laughs> and Rothendrain? Rothendrain. I gotta love these names, man. I'm dyslexic, so that's great. <clears throat> it is within... Often Dane that the Shire is located and they shared this space with the Duerdane. Take it away, Pretty Shannon. Cool. <laughs> so technically, wait, wait, technically that means they're citizens of Gondor, right? Yes. Yeah. Our and and we'll, that comes up later on. Oh, my bad. Spoiler alert. For, for anyway. bum, bum, bum. <laughs> um, so the second one is the Shire actually has its own calendar, which I did not know before reading this. Um, the Shire officially was founded in the year 1601 of the Third Age. However, that year is also referred to as year number one in the Shire calendar, which is also called the Shire Reckoning. Um, so much like the, the traditional calendar we use now, the Shire calendar contains 12 months, months 12 months, <laughs> each with 30 days. Um, the Shire Reckoning officially began when the Hobbit brothers Marcho and Blanco crossed the Brandywine River and settled in the area. And then the fertile land of what became the Shire was then gifted to the Hobbits by King Argaleb II. Can we just take a moment and appreciate the Hobbit names? <laughs> I, okay, I, I lost it at Marcho. <laughs> yeah, Marcho. I was just like, wow. And I'm, I'm assuming it's Blanco. I mean, that, that kind of sounds more like a Hispanic or Spanish style name but you know okay we'll go with that (laughs) all right the next fact is the hobbits once lived near the misty mountains the movie would have the audience believe that the hobbits have always lived in the shire but that's not the case hobbits originally hailed from the vales of alden alden near the misty maybe yeah alden near the misty mountains however growing the gub the growing troubles of uh, in nearby Markwood caused them to relocate. They tra- and they traveled west over the Misty Mountains before settling in Dulland, and eventually they made their way further west and finally settling in the Peaceful Shire. 
Why does it always seem that the troubles of Markwood seem to cause people to move? Okay, speaking speaking as a very Hobbit-like being, if I lived near Markwood and saw like giant spiders, like Shelob, yeah, I would leave too. So she loves like, right, siblings, bye. yeah. I'd be like, all right, bye, I'll have a good one. Be like, see ya, I'm gonna go find somewhere else. I'm like, I, I don't like spiders that much, so part of me is just thinking, yeah, bye, Felicia. For real, right? That would be me. I'd be like, bye, I'm done. Um, yeah. <laughs> How many yeah. people in chat don't like spiders that way? Raise your hand. Okay. Yeah, for real. <laughs> be like, yeah, no, I'm good. <laughs> I don't like little spiders, so seeing big, massive spiders, that's a deal breaker for me. I got the heebie-jeebies in the movie theater, not gonna lie. Oh yeah, that's that's one of my least favorite parts of the entire movie. So, yeah. So, totally oh, for you there. Long. Yes. <laughs> um, the Shire was once a royal hunting ground. So, before the Shire was the Shire, it was a royal hunting ground often used by King Argaleb II, the 10th king of Arthedain. Um, he began his rule in 1589 of the Third Age before he died in 1670. Um, it says his plague, his rule was plagued by a literal plague and the aforementioned evil in Mirkwood, resulting in the area of Arthedain, which itself was born from the fragmentation of Arnor, growing depopulated. So with his kingdom in ruin, King Argaleb II gifted his old hunting grounds to the hobbits, and in return, they pleaded loyalty. So basically he said, yeah, sure, you can have it. And they're like, oh, cool, thanks. We'll be loyal. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Part of me is thinking, since I think about the hobbits now, I'm like, in what way would they give you a benefit? Just saying. But that brings up the yeah. next point. The Shire is part of the Kingdom of Gondor. Yes. Eventually, the witch, the witch king of Agmar conquered Arthur Dane, but left the Shire alone for, un for reasons unknown. When the, king when the Kingdom of Arnor collapsed, the Shire officially became part of the Kingdom of Gondor. However, the Shire has also remained an entirely self-governed providence. Yeah. There's actually a story behind that. Apparently, the Hobbits actually did show up at, the, at the, one of... The during the War of the Ring and actually gave the Witch King a run for his money. So I'm picturing a bunch of hobbits with hop frying pans for some reason, you know. <laughs> As you do. I mean, you don't mess with the hobbits. I mean, that's that's kind of a, a trend in, you know, the books and the movies and stuff. Everybody kind of underestimates the hobbits, but... Just because just they're short and hairy and like to eat don't mean they can't hold their own. Exactly, right? Yes. So, all right, so moving along, it says um, the story takes place roughly 1400 years after the founding of the Shire. So they like, you know, Ace was saying they lived in peace as a self-governing province for about 1400 years. Um, it says Bilbo acquired the One Ring in the year 1343 of the Shire Reckoning, meaning it was 13. 43 years, 1,343 years since Marcho and Blanco, there's those great names again, mm -hmm. crossed the Brandywine River. Um, the events of the Fellowship of the Ring began in the year 1418 of the Shire Reckoning. Um, it was in April of that year that Gandalf returned to Bag Inn for Bilbo's birthday party, which is like the opening of the Fellowship you know, story. Mm -hmm. And it was in the following September that the ring race entered Hobbiton, officially declaring an end to world peace. So, hey, that's that's like right now. So, you know, <laughs> be be on the lookout for ring race, y'all. Well, I like how the book describes it. It was one of those things where Frodo just finally discovers that the Shire is no longer safe. And it's like, that's a very sad thing to figure out is when is home no longer safe? That's a yeah. sad thing to feel. It is. It is. All right. So the next one is the Shire was attacked by Saruman. Speaking movie, of not feeling safe. Yeah. Speaking of not feeling safe, the movie remains faithful to the source. Excuse me. The movie remains very faithful to the source novels, but for one major difference, the event known as the Scorching of the Shire. They didn't put that in the movie. 
No. The Return of the King novel ends with the, sh- with the hobbits returning home to find an industrialized find an industrialized area governed by Saruman. The hobbits return in huh? excuse me return inside of the Battle of Brywar Water, which is known as the final battle of the War of the Ring. Saruman is defeated and exiled by Frodo, but his throat is eventually slit at the doorstep of Bag End by Grima Wormtongue. The movie and doesn't I, portray it that way. <laughs> no, and I conveniently forgot that that even happened in the book. <laughs> it's like, did I just block this out or something? Apparently I did. Eh, it's a pretty crazy part in the book. And, and I respect why they didn't put it in the movie. I mean, no, they did put it in the movies. They put it in the first part of the fellowship. One of the first parts of the fellowship when he's looking in the mirror. When mm-hmm. Frodo's looking in the mirror, they show what happens to the Shire. They didn't put it in Return of the King because it was kind of one of those things. It's just kind of like, oh, the ring is destroyed. The day is saved. And, uh, okay, you can't go home because home's being destroyed. So they were just like, no, let's just actually kind of give it a happy ending. Yeah, it, it would have kind of ruined the, the buzz. Yeah, don't ruin the buzz, man. Don't ruin yeah. the buzz. Yeah, no. So this next one, I did not know either. <laughs> <laughs> I learned so much. I felt like such a fraud. I was like, I didn't know this. Um, <laughs> Buckland was given to the Shire by Aragorn. Um, so located east of the Brandywine River is a region known as Buckland. While Buckland is inhabited by Shire hobbits, it's not officially recognized as a region of the Shire. Buckland is separated from the Shire by the Brandywine. Um, but access is granted to both locations via the Brandywine Bridge and Buckleberry Ferry, which the hobbits used to escape from the ring race. And I would just say that is one of my favorite parts of the fellowship. Yes. Because Mary is just like so intense. You know, he's just like, Buckleberry Ferry, let's go. Yeah. <laughs> or fo- no, follow me. Yeah. Follow me. He's just <laughs> so in the moment and so intense. It just, anyway. Um, so the area was eventually made part of the Shire during the reign of King Aragorn. I don't remember who owns. It doesn't. I don't think it ever really says who owns Buckland. But yeah, apparently Buckland is. Yeah, I was thinking to myself like, really, Buckland's not part of the Shire. And then they actually kind of mention it in the book. It was kind of like, no, it's yeah. just owned by Bree. Nobody really governs it though, so it's just there. But hobbits yeah. live there, so have fun. <laughs> I mean, just just hobbits are kind of just they just took over. It's like, oh hey, we'll, we'll just live here too. <laughs> and this fact I did know because I played Lord of the Rings online, and it's always throwing this in my face. But the Shire <laughs> is protected by the Duerdain Rangers. The Shire is a peaceful location. It's not very important in terms of geography, a uh, geographical bleh, geographical positioning, nature source. Or dangerous inhabitants, so it remains free from violence and conquest. However, it is still protected by the Duodane Rangers, who regularly patrol the Shire's borders. These Rangers are the last remnants of the of the Duodane of Anor, the old kingdom in which the Shire is located. So basically, they're going around watching the border. So why there's no trouble in Hobbiton? Hmm, I wonder why. It's because all them scary men standing outside your borders with bows and arrows. Exactly. And I, I kind of thought that was cool. I mean, I knew it. This is one I knew too, but it was just kind of one of those. It was like, oh, that was really nice. You know, hey, they were watching out for the little hobbit people. So, <laughs> yep. All right. And then the last one about the Shire is that the Shire is often visited by elves and dwarves. So the movies kind of portray the Shire as just this little bitty oasis untouched by outside influence. And while it's mostly true, it was also subjected to the odd visit from elves and dwarves. Um, you know, obviously elves went there in the events of The Hobbit, you know. Mm-hmm. Um, but dwarves also travel on the great road that leads to their mines in the Blue Mountains. Wandering companies of elves also pass through the Shire while traveling to the Grey Havens. Both races are of great importance and interest to the hobbits. I believe the book refers to them as the queer folk who wander through. Yep, because anything that's not typical to a hobbit, you know, they're, they're going to be, you know, those queer folk. <laughs> <laughs> Them queer folk. But I just thought it was funny because, like, if you're looking at a map, no one seems to think about it until you actually look at it. Like, the Shire's smack dab in the middle of mm-hmm. the Great Road to get to the ocean. Like, yes. you've gotta, you literally have to go to the Shire, otherwise you're walking all the way around it. 
And who wouldn't want to go visit the Shire? I mean, they got food. They're great company. They they got good. They throw good parties. Oh yes, they throw great parties. Here's the thing about par- their parties. I don't actually know if it's a fact in this one. I don't think it is. But on Hobbit's birthdays, the one who's celebrating their birthday gives gifts away. Like they give yes. gifts to their guests. Yes. And rather than receiving gifts, which I find mm-hmm. is very interesting, it's a cele- It's your celebration, but you are giving things to people who celebrate with you. Yeah. That's that's like the tradition. Um, and you know, I knew this because way back in the day when I was more active on Etsy and it was more like a little like community, um, there was somebody who posted something in their shop and it was, you know, oh, it's my birthday. I'm celebrating it Hobbit style. Here's a, a bracelet for free. And I thought it was just a really cool little idea. Sweet. Yeah. I don't actually do that should my Etsy shop ever take off. I'm just lazy and don't want to post things. <laughs> Yeah, I it's one of those, I'm like, you know, I think I'm going to celebrate my birthday as a hobbit, and then I forget. Yep, I forget. Or something happens, you know, anything. Oh, yeah. All things. Right. Stuff and things. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so now we're going to move on to the interesting hop facts about hobbits. Well, that's interesting. I'll read this part then. Although most people know hobbits as, uh, know that hobbits are excellent custodians of jewelry, they're am- there are many lesser-known facts that about these unusual cre- creatures that even hardcore fans might not be aware of. True fact. We mm-hmm. we don't know much about the Shire in the film. Uh, we don't see much of the Shire in the films, but Tolkien wrote exquisitely about the history of hobbits and the characteristics of their of their culture. He spread it out through all the dang books too. So if you really get yes. bored, go look for them books. Yes. Okay. From their bright-colored history and their of their wait what okay from their lovely <laughs> their love of okay okay my brain effed that up okay <laughs> from their love of bright colors to history of their facial hair <laughs> many tidbits of yes. token trivia which which weren't included in the movie trilogy there's only so much you can squeeze in 11 and a half hours i forgot that's how many hours it was mm-hmm. what they lack in height they make up for in their unique customs and habits Here's a few known facts about the little hobbits. Okay. First one is, they have a passion for mushrooms. I believe that was portrayed very well in the film. Yes. So great that they pulled them off the side of the road. All right. Hobbits have a passion for all foods, but their love of mushrooms rises above the rest. Yes, even okay, bacon. Okay, so they're, <laughs> although they tend to shun adventures like dwarves shun clean-shaven women, hobbits come across lava fields and spider-filled forests without second thoughts if enough mushrooms were on the other side. In fact, it's because of mushrooms that the four hobbits almost get bowled bowled over by a black rider in the Fellowship of the Ring. If Frodo hadn't sensed the danger and shouted out to his pals to get off the road at the last second of the story, the Lord of the Rings would have ended with the ring wraith sneaking up on the four hobbits rustling around a patch of mushrooms. Obviously, the world uh, oblivious to the world around them, which for a hobbit would have been oh, the worst way to go. My only issue with that scene is that it wasn't the fact that one of the hobbits threw something away that distracted the ring race. It was because an elf, an elf group was actually walking down the same road. Sadly, no elves in that scene. Yeah, I, I will say, I just I don't understand the the thing about mushrooms. I hate mushrooms. <laughs> See, I love mushrooms. Ugh. I'm I'm weird though. They're well, so here's, the thing, here's the thing about me with my mushrooms is they have there's an earthy tone to it. Yes, I know it sounds disgusting. It's like eating dirt. But like mushrooms in a soup, mushrooms in your ramen, mushrooms with your steak. Ugh, great. It's perfect. But anyway, I digress. <laughs> They're fungus. Just no, I'm not eating fungus. Sorry. Well, guess what? Well, guess what? Just, bread just is. Fight me. <laughs> what? Bread's a yeast, so... That's totally different. <laughs> fight me. <laughs> I'm not gonna fight you over mushrooms. There's more mushrooms for me to eat. Okay, good. <laughs> Let's move <laughs> on. Alright, so... Hobbits don't grow beards unless they have store blood in them. So, given that both hobbits and dwarves are famous for being short, one could imagine that they would be easy to mix up. I disagree with this. 
Um, but there's one key feature to keep in mind when differentiating between the two races, and it's beards. While most every dwarf you meet in Middle-earth has a beard, including the little hairy women, as Gimli put it, most hobbits lack facial hair. Um, however, in the past, there was one race of early halflings called the Stores who were capable of growing beards, and some modern-day hobbits with store blood are able to grow facial hair, too. I just think the idea of a, a hobbit with a beard just sounds kind of odd. But, you know, that's just It's me. almost as weird as saying that there's one elf who has a beard. But there actually is just one elf who has a beard. So um, another fact about hobbits is they love bright colors, which makes Aislinn trip up on the words that she was reading before. All right. Mm. Hobbits adore bright colors, especially yellow and green. They often dress in attire that reflects the, their love of colors from bright green dresses with pops of yellow with popping yellow waistcoats. Why would you ever wear green and yellow together? Oh well. Unfortunately, we didn't we didn't get to see much of the colorful clothing in the Lord of the Rings. Giving us the bright colored breeches aren't exactly a great way to hide from the great eye of Sauron. Instead, the hobbits wore more earthy tones, which helped them blend into the scenery and avoid being detected. But their love of colors was reflected in the dec in the dec decor of the shire which their doors were typically weren't typically gray or brown with boring human <laughs> the boring old human world but rather bright shades of red yellow blue and green i do adore bag End's door it's very pretty yes yeah. uh, i i would love to have like a hobbit door not gonna I lie it would be great it would no so. one would ever lose your house because you're probably the only one on the street with that door Probably. I mean, <laughs> you know, depending on who your neighbors are. <laughs> of course. <laughs> so the next little known fact about hobbits are their average height is three feet and six inches. But there is an important distinction, and that would be Mary and Pippin. Cheaters. So, <laughs> they're not <laughs> cheaters. <laughs> Although they're called halflings, hobbits are a little more than half the height of your average human. They can range from two to four feet in height, but a typical hobbit is around three and a half feet tall. Um, the most notable exceptions to this rule are, of course, Merry and Pippin. Um, given that they tend to drink anything placed in front of them, especially if it comes in pints, they didn't exactly exercise restraint when they stumbled across the Ent drought of Fangorn Forest. Um, it's a drink that stimulates growth in its partakers, and as a result, they become more like three-quarterlings growing to four and a half feet in height. I will just say, I would have loved to have been there when that actually, you know, became known. It's like, wait, how did you grow taller? You know, how did you get taller? <laughs> Could you imagine them coming home and then, like, their family, like, wait, what, what happened to you? How did you get this tall? Yeah. You, you grew. What? <laughs> Like, you've grown. Yeah. <laughs> and here's another interesting fact is that they live longer than humans. Yep. Despite their habits of overindulging not just food, but also pint, <laughs> excuse me, pipe, weed, and ale, hobbits live in a good deal longer than humans, with an average lifespan of, ex exactly, of extraordinary of 100 years. Expectancy. I cannot read. With the average life expectancy of 100 years. They can be any number of reasons for their peaceful way of life to simply, to the simple possibility that they just have good genes. It could also be because they tend to avoid going on adventures that might put them in an early grave. No matter how much fun it may be, stealing from a fire breathing dragon isn't exactly good for your health. I have know a few humans who might also agree as well. I mean, and maybe, it a few, maybe a few dwarves. Yeah. It worked out good for Bilbo. I mean. <laughs> well, yeah, if you end up finding a magical ring that makes you live past 100, yeah. I mean, he he lived to be quite old because he went, he lived to 111 and then went to Rivendell and lived for longer. So, I mean, worked out fine for him. He's a lucky hobbit. He is. He is. So, but did you know that Gollum used to be something like a hobbit. I did know, but our viewers I, may not have. <laughs> <laughs> so although he might have looked something more like something you'd drag from the bottom of the sea, like any sort of human in Lord of the Rings, Gollum was once something like a hobbit. In fact, he was a member of the Stor race, which was one of the early forms of halflings, you know, the ones with beards. 
And wasn't he kind of scruffy in like the flashbacks too? Yep. Uh, I thought so. But after the One Ring corrupted him, Gollum retreated to the bowels of the mountains and slowly became the slimy creature we all learned to both love and hate in The Lord of the Rings. Most I, convoluted character ever. For real. He he was very confusing. Just, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay, small tangent. My mom was actually watching The Hobbit with me earlier, and they were doing the riddles and things. Mm-hmm. And like right before that, we know he's talking to himself about why he wants to eat Bilbo over, and Bilbo's mm-hmm. like, "We talk." And it's like, "I didn't say anything. We weren't talking to you." And she went, <laughs> "What?" <laughs> anyway, rolling along. In the book, <laughs> hobbits eat six meals a day, not seven. Oh, wah, wah, wah. Fact. if seven meals a day does sound a bad, tad bit indolent, does sound oh, excuse me. If seven meals a day sounded a tad bit indulgent to you, know that hobbits in the book are a bit more restrained from those in the film, limiting their daily intake to merely six meals per day. He gads. <laughs> I mean, from the, seven, six, whatever. Who says one spit in one hand, once in the other? Who knows? <laughs> oh, excuse me, six in one hand, half a dozen in the other. <laughs> I got my idioms messed up there. <laughs> anyway. For the movies, dinner, sup- dinner and supper were split into two separate meals. But in the books, hobbits only have one meal, one meal after afternoon tea. However, breakfast, second breakfast, elevensies, and luncheon are still, of course, the high, the high priority of high priority, as it th- is if that needed to be said. Well, if you smoke all that weed, I assume you have to eat a lot. So there you go. Get the munchies. really don't think that's what that weed is. Just saying. Hobbits are able to move extremely quietly. So although they can make quite a ruckus at the local tavern on a lively evening, especially if there are tables they can dance on and they like to sing, um, hobbits are known for being able to move around exceptionally quietly. This is how Bilbo managed to sneak up on the three trolls and the hobbit without them noticing. Um, They're very good at disappearing into the background scenery, which is part of what makes them so good at sneaking into the evil lairs of dragons and or flaming eyeballs. (laughs) <laughs> okay. What? Most of the main Hobbit characters are related to the Toot Clan, which is known, which is known to be the most adventurous. Okay. For the race that is the most famous for being predict, for being predictable as they, or for being short, Hobbits sure have a lot of adventures. However, they venture off to steal from a dragon or throw some jewelry into a volcano. Hobbits have been the center of some of the greatest quests in the history of Middle Earth. However, most hobbits who indulge in these dangerous businesses of dangerous businesses of going out their front door are related to Tukes, a family that is famous amongst the hobbits for having far too many adventures and very improper hobbit behavior. I mean, didn't you say it was the Tukes that like married into some of the elves. So that's a that's a rumor, and I stick to it. So there you go. Yeah. So I mean, well, eh, well, the I Tukes were the ones who kind of stayed outside the Shire, knowing the known to stay outside the Shire. So yeah. Also, they were close. Sense. They were close to Merkwood, and Merkwood, unlike their kin, are <laughs> not so wise and very dangerous. <laughs> They're the party elves. The dim party elves, the ones who actually get drunk. <laughs> They're the party you know, elves. Unlike in Rivendell, they aren't so prim and proper. <laughs> okay, the Merkwood elves or the Yolo elves. <laughs> I was just trying to bring this back here. It's like rain it in, rain it in. So, <laughs> hobbits only come of age when they turn thirty-three. So, <gasps> although some of us may act like stupid teenagers all the way into our thirties, present company included. We Mm -hmm. humans are officially adults at the age of 18. Hobbits, on the other hand, only come of age when they turn 33. But, you know, that probably does very little to keep them out of taverns. So if their top-notch pipeweed and excellent ale weren't already making you want to run away to the Shire and embrace the Hobbit lifestyle, add 15 extra years of youth to the list of reasons that Hobbits have it made. (laughs) <laughs> All right. I yes. think that concludes the fun facts of the lovely Hobbit and Shire stuff's words. <laughs> I'd like to thank our residential Hobbit for joining me this evening. <laughs> hey, you're welcome. <laughs> <laughs> 
<laughs> I'm a hobbit too. Who am I kidding? Yeah, you're, it's you're like kinda... that. It's like that. Hmm. You're more of an elf. Well, it is like okay. This is the funny meme. Okay, so I I think it's Sarah Scribbles. She draws the thing like growing up. Mm-hmm. I'm gonna be an elf when I grow up. As an adult, who am I kidding? I'm a dwarf. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> but anyway. So yes. I hope you all enjoyed these random ramblings of two nerdy girls and their fun of Lord of the Rings and Middle Earth. Yes. And uh, we hope you will join us on our next adventure, which pick something random, Shana. What should I paint next? Um how about Mirkwood? <laughs> The Greenwood and Mirkwood? Sure. Alrighty then, we'll do that next. So hopefully you'll all join us again for um, uh, the Greenwood slash Mirkwood. And we'll do a little, we'll probably do a little bit more history stuff on it because there's actually a lot more in my encyclopedia, I'm sure, of Mirkwood that I don't have to go digging through every book that Tolkien ever wrote. You know, that's no fun. Depends on your definition of fun. But sure. (laughs) I don't have all the books, so... Probably wouldn't be too fun. <laughs> <laughs> probably And of not. course, with that recording, that means I probably get to talk about one of your favorite characters. Care to share who that is? The Randall. Yay! <laughs> played My by the lovely. Yep, played My by bae. the lovely Lee Pace. Yes. <laughs> who, who is the... the um, the butt of my my ongoing joke you know if if i die please tell leave pace that i love him (laughs) if something doesn't go according to plan (laughs) it's the the internet's responsibility to tell leave pace that i love him that's what i ask (laughs) all right youtube that's your quest (laughs) all right then so we're gonna call it a day and we hope to see you guys next time so bye